Hey, this is Jill Simonello with Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and today we have the opportunity to drive something that's actually pretty cool. This is the Jeep Grand Cherokee L. What that means is this is a three-row vehicle, and it is the first three-row vehicle that Jeep has had in its lineup since the Commander. That's been a while. So we're gonna check out this vehicle. We're gonna look at the exterior styling, the interior styling, and by the way, we are gonna take a really in-depth look at that third row because uh, they tell me it is not a penalty box and that real adults can fit back there. So I'm not a real adult, so I'm gonna pull somebody into the vortex with me. So let's take a closer look right now. with a quick exterior walk around of the vehicle. And the very first thing I wanna say is this is not a rebadged Dodge Durango. I've had, I've seen, I guess I should say, a lot of comments uh, in social media saying, oh, this is just a rebadged Dodge Durango. It is not. This is a purpose-built platform with only the Grand Cherokee in mind. There is currently no other vehicle on this platform not a single one this is it this is the first one so um, get it out of your head right now if you think this is built on a dodge durango platform it is not in fact uh during dinner conversations last night they managed to say that this was built with electrification in mind so uh think about that for a minute that's kind of a cool idea all right so <laughs> now that we've got that out of the way let's look at the front of the vehicle. So you have your typical seven slot grill right here. And uh, oh, by the way, <laughs> I'm gonna call some attention to what's going on in the background over here. Um, they have an off-road course set up for us and you have a vehicle uh, like mine going through some moguls over there. And uh, I think you probably saw <laughs> the vehicle getting a little bit of air. I, I was gonna start over there with this vehicle, but it sat and they talked for a really long time. Oh, there you go, it's getting some air again. Um, that is kind of cool that <laughs> this vehicle can do this. Look at that. Um, one of the things they said is that this is a purpose-built vehicle. So it is a Jeep and it is supposed to perform like a Jeep, you know? So they didn't build it to, to be just this on-road crawler. It can actually do some pretty serious off-road things. As you can see, it's doing, hey, look at that right there. <laughs> Kapow. Um, I, I just always keep thinking it's gonna go kerthunk, but it, I, I can't hear it going kerthunk. Uh, so it is, it is a Jeep, it is built to be a Jeep, and it is supposed to do Jeep things. Um, now, obviously, the suspension isn't all twisty like you would see on a Wrangler, uh, but it's got some really good travel, and that's doing an amazing thing for a vehicle that is three rows. I gotta keep saying that. That's a three row vehicle doing that. All right, so <laughs> let me um, take it back to my vehicle. Uh, we, will, we will go back here. So I'm driving an Overland model. And so this is an off-road vehicle um, or the off-road version of this vehicle. And you can see it has some tow hooks on the front and um, it, it gets the, trail rated badging. Uh, I, I think we just witnessed it being able to do some, some really cool trail rated things over there. And uh, <laughs> I just feel like I need to just hold back and I'll just do some talking while it's just going in the background. Uh, but the, the designers of this vehicle, you know, we're given some very specific parameters. Obviously, this is a Jeep. It has to have some the seven slot grill and a, anything else was basically a non-starter. But if you go around and you look at the exterior, you know, especially the side profile, you can see, 
I, if you've seen the Grand Wagoneer concept, like there's a lot of Grand Wagoneer here as well, I think. And, you know, with the, the longer, the, the longer horizontal lines, you know, I'm seeing a whole new design language here. Now, just because this vehicle is starting as a three row vehicle doesn't mean that it's going to stay a three row vehicle. There will be a two row five passenger version that is coming out soon, I think later this year. So, so you can look for that as well. You've got some 18 inch tires on here. Um, also, uh, I think because this is, you know, the Overland model, you have some different wheels on this vehicle. So if you look at some of the higher end versions, you've got some fancy wheels going on, but I, I like these wheels. I think they look really good. They're just not as fancy schmancy as, as the, the top tier trims. You move around to the back and again, you've got this really great strong, I'm going to kind of move forward the, the you know move, pan forward I guess I should say it's very strong horizontal line that really just surrounds the entire vehicle and I wouldn't say this is pretty but I would say it's more on the handsome side of the spectrum so again I mentioned this is the overland model you can see the badging there and you can tell it is a L more specifically by the fact that it actually well has an L right there Base price for the Grand Cherokee L is going to be just more than $36,000, and that is without the destination price, and it will top out at more than $65,000. Again, without destination, probably looking closer to sixty-seven dollars as the top price for this vehicle. Now that we've done a quick walk around out here, I want to step inside and take a look at some of the cool technology. All right, let's power up the Grand Cherokee L. Now, I have it set to the off-road pages there. Now, it's telling me it's not ready because I need to hook my seatbelt, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm just doing a walk around, so I'm not gonna hook my seatbelt. Uh, but you'll see that, you know, you've got your off-road pages here, but the, the display back here, the 10-inch display, is pretty configurable. And you do that by just kind of scrolling through these things here. So this is kind of going through your off-road pages just by hitting your arrows there. And then when you go up and down, you can see the different, and I'll go back here for a second, because what you can't really tell is this is your a map. This is a navigation map, and it literally goes from screen to screen, but we are on the Chelsea, Chelsea Proving Grounds um, for Stellantis in the, middle, in the middle of the Proving Grounds. There are no roads here, so you, you can't really see any detail, but um, that is actually a map back there, and it takes up the full um, width and height, and it looks pretty cool, especially when navigation is operating. So then you have your trip operations. I did have um, <laughs> the, the miles per gallon on there. I was at 17.4 miles per gallon, which for me, frankly, as an aggressive driver, I don't think is that bad. Um, and then you've got your assist buttons. And you know here you can adjust your head-up display. I don't know if you can see the head-up display on there, but it's got navigation and your speed on there, and it looks pretty good. And it operates pretty well. So um, these are the settings for that. All right, so let's move over to the Uconnect system. So this is a this is a Uconnect 5 system. And I found that, you know, all of the, the buttons, um, not really buttons, but the, the, the touch points on here operate pretty well. And they are, you know, they, 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 they work well with my fingers. I mean, obviously my fingers are warm now. So I'm assuming even in the winter, it would work pretty well. And what's really great about this is you have these menu screens here that are really customizable. So whoever set this up, you know, on the first My Pages screen, you've got the map and music, then you have, you know, some of the more frequently used things. So AM, FM, you know, heated seat, hot, you know, steering wheel, heated steering wheel, and you can add a widget there. So you can go in and then um, maybe, Mm, I'll put my phone favorites there. So now your, oh, well, the phone favorites were down below, but <laughs> your phone favorites, um, you know, let's, let's edit that one then. So I'll put climate there. And so you can really customize this and it's very easy with a swipe to get where you want with this screen. You have a lot of redundant controls too. So here, 
you know, you have your HVAC and you can, you know, use the slider, which uh, I don't really like the slider very much. Um, that doesn't work very well, but you've also got access to your heated and cooled seats um, as well as, um, you know, the temperature. But hey, look at this. <laughs> you have redundant controls. For, so for people who need the redundant controls or like the, the actual hard buttons, they're here. And so I found, um, you know, to her, turn on the heated steering wheel, this was easier, but to adjust my temperature, I've been doing it through here. Now, one of the really cool things on this vehicle is something I can't actually really show you very well, and that is going to be the Macintosh system. So it has, let's see, there we go, a really cool app on here where you can look at the sound output levels. And so I'm going to turn up this song for like two seconds, just so you can see what it looks like, but I can't do it for too long because otherwise we'll get pinged for copyrights. Uh, but similar to your, your home audio system from Macintosh, you can check that out and I, I don't know, it's kind of mesmerizing. Maybe don't do that while you're driving. But, but it's really cool that that is a possibility. You have some buttons up here that are going to be important to know about, especially this one, which turns off the auto stop start engine. And you know, overall, I like I said, I think that they've just done a really good job with this system, with the vehicle, and I think it looks really nice. It operates really well. It's easy to touch, easy to swipe, and uh, intuitively laid out and highly configurable. All right, so let's talk about some of the materials here. I, as I said, I'm in the Overland model, so I don't get the pretty quilted pattern patterns um, on, that you'll see on some of the seats, but you do have some nice leather seating surfaces with some really excellent stitching and you've got some great wood grain going on here as well and you know the stitching and the leather on the dash you know this is a nice material it looks really good it feels good and they've just done a really nice job with that now here here's going to be your showpiece however and this is your gear shifter and um, this will be the same gear shift that you will see in the Grand Wagoneer and it's really attractively laid out metal and it's got texture to it now because it's daylight you can't see it but there is also um a, a light right here that will glow at night and it like I saw pictures it looks really cool uh, you have your wireless charging pad as well as a nice amount of USB ports. So two USB C, two USB A ports, and um, you know, kind of a, a 12 volt. I don't want to call it an auxiliary jack, but a 12 volt jack there. Um, so I have a question for you: Does anybody actually ever really use that anymore? Comment below. I'm I'm curious. What do you use that for? Um, but. Overall, just a lot of nice textures. I mean, even, even the volume dial has some good textures. And if you can see, I don't know if the video is showing through, but there's just some nice like design elements, even on the face of the dial with the, the lines, you know, and the grooves kind of circling around. So everything has just been super well thought out. It's really attractive. And uh, you'll see in my driving impressions that overall, I am really enjoying this vehicle. First impressions are, are pretty favorable, uh, both from the design standpoint and the ride and handling. So why don't we get into some of those driving impressions? I couldn't go into driving impressions without sitting in this third row and you'll notice I'm joined by somebody who's actually a little bit bigger than I am. This is Mario. He works for Jeep and he is six foot four. Um, I think you can see the size difference here. Uh, and he still has a little bit of leg room between the back of the seat. We did this, scoot this up just a little bit, not a lot, maybe about an inch. There's still some really decent leg, row, uh, leg room in the second row as well. And um, you probably can't see it because of this bump down, but the way the ceiling is curved, there's actually a really nice dip up here. So he actually has about a, two inches um, from his head to the top of the ceiling as well. So um, how comfortable is it back here? Very comfortable. I mean, when we designed this, one one of the key enablers that allowed us to get this headroom was previous generation Grand Cherokee had a bottom slide sunroof. Mm -hmm. What we actually did in this car, this has a top slide sunroof. So the sunroof actually 
protrudes out and slides back. So what we were able to do is maximize the space here. And as you can see, it gives us nice clean lines around. There's not any gaps or anything like that. And then as we move forward, one of the things is that the, the sunshade is retractable. And we package that in this area here. Mm -hmm. We have some modules here. And as you mentioned, we scalloped out this top to basically maximize. I spent uh, many hours back here. <laughs> You know, we'd say, not big enough, not good enough. So we'd, they'd send me back your mark, I'll sit in the back, see how it goes. So and here we are. So this is big enough, it's good enough for somebody who's six foot four, as well as somebody who's about five feet tall. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna flip the camera around really quick because I'm gonna show you what it actually looks like. And there's a couple of other things back here you might wanna see. All right, so I flipped the camera around just because I wanted to show you, uh, again, like the headroom. Mario is six four and I, the knee room. Now his knees do pop up off of the seat a little bit, but the seat itself is well padded and cushioned. So you're not going to have a lot of pain on your on your derriere if you have to sit back here for a couple of hours. And and Mario has told me he has sat back here for a couple of hours and, and he's uh, okay with it. Um, so the other thing I want to show you, and first off, you can see over um, his shoulder there, there's a couple of little Easter eggs that are hidden in the window of some uh, Grand Wagoneer, not Grand Wagoneers, uh, some old Cherokees there. Then look at that, the air vents are on the side. So they're not at the uh, on the ceiling, they're not on the floor, they are on the side, so they are hitting you in the face exactly where you want them to be. Um, and I'll switch over onto this side because again, you've got the air vents, but hey, you've got USB ports back here as well, USB-C, USB-A, um, and there is the port over there as well, but I just figured you could get a better view here. Plus there is the cup holder and, oh, one more Easter egg. All right, so now that we have seen some of the exterior and interior features, I want to give you a couple of driving impressions. I've been behind the wheel for about an hour and a half, and um, some of it was highway, and some of it was um, as I'm currently on country winding road. So not a whole bunch of twisty bits, but enough that you really get a sense of how the vehicle is gonna corner and handle when you are driving on a country road. <laughs> and I have to say, so far I've been really impressed with the Grand Cherokee L. Um, one of the things that the engineers did is that they lowered this belt, belt line here. So you've got more windows to give you better visibility. And the overall effect of that is that this vehicle drives much smaller than what it really is. I mean, this is a very large three row vehicle and it almost feels car-like. I mean, it's not car-like. It doesn't really feel car-like. There's certainly some weight to it but it's very planted and I don't feel like it's tippy. And I don't feel like I'm driving a land yacht. You know, often when you get into a three road vehicle, you, you start to feel like a tank or um, like you have no control. And the steering is very precise and everything about this vehicle is very planted and solid. So I'm really liking how it is driving both on the highway and on these winding country roads. One thing I want to point out too is that the engineer spent some time on this A pillar here to make it a little bit slimmer. So you will notice that the speakers have moved off of the A pillar and they've put them on the dash so that they could get as much out of this as possible so that you have better visibility out the front and the corners and usually because I'm in a far forward driving position I find myself doing this a lot um, because I'm trying to see around this pillar to, to be able to make sure that I can see around the corner and I haven't made any hard left turns that I remember uh, so far but but with the the winding turns that we're making like I don't I don't feel the need to, to do that maneuver to be able to see around the a pillar and to make sure that you know what what the road is doing up ahead so they've done a great job with the visibility the other thing I would like to point to is the quietness of the cabin it is super quiet in here uh, I, I have the air on uh, not super high but it's a medium vent speed and you can't really hear it 
also there's not a lot of road noise, tire noise, wind noise creep, creeping into the cabin. So they've done a really good job with the noise, vibration, and harshness um, to, to make this a quiet space. You do get a little engine noise in, but the really good thing is you only get the engine noise when you really want it. So I've been playing around with putting it into sport mode and leaving it in automatic mode and, and in sport mode, so I'll, I'll flip it over right now. I don't know if you heard that, but the, the engine sound just kind of blips up a little bit. Plus the throttle, spot, throttle response increases and you get a little bit of a faster acceleration. So it makes it a little more fun to drive and it has, I, I mean, I don't really want to say a sporty feel to it because it's still like a three row vehicle, but, but it feels sporty-er. Uh, so I, I like the sport mode, it holds the, the RPMs just a little bit longer so that <laughs> you get the instantaneous speed when you put your foot on the pedal and it revs a little bit higher. So I like the sport mode, but you know, if you're driving at a constant speed on the highway, I'm just gonna keep it flipped back into automatic. Now, the other thing to know, when you have this in sport mode, the vehicle actually lowers. So there's a, there's a dynamic suspension here and the vehicle will lower about an inch. Um, they gave me some millimeter number and then they're like, about an inch. So it goes about an inch lower to get a very you know, aerodynamic ride height. So um, you, you know, you're, you're kind of reducing any of that wind noise and the, the harshness that would hit the vehicle as you are driving a little more aggressively. So I, I could see toggling between those modes in everyday driving. You know, when you're in the more twisty turnies of a country road, flip it over to sport. But for the most part, I think automatic does a really nice job in terms of handling as well as battle response. It's not as quick, but it's still pretty decent. So I'm in the Overland model. This has the V6 engine and I think it's really good. Jeep has said that the V6 engine, the Panastar, is obviously going to be the volume seller for this vehicle, but there is an available V8. I'm sure that is also really nice. I've, I've seen some uh, TikTok videos that people have done of people who've driven the V8. They haven't been able to really talk about um, how they feel about it at this point because I'm, I'm, I'm driving this car and watching those videos before the embargo lifts but um, it's available and they said it sounds nice. I think that was acceptable uh, conversation to have before the embargo lifts. But now that the embargo is lifted, I can tell you that this V6 engine is really nice. And so I, I don't think there's really any compromises here. This is a heavy vehicle and I've merged on the highway a couple of times and as Tim will tell you, I'm a little bit of an aggressive driver <laughs> when I'm merging in with traffic. and. I didn't feel like this had any problem. I, I mean, it's not s super smooth, quick, fast, whew, but it did what I needed it to do. So in terms of driving impressions, I really like it. Now, I've only had, I think I mentioned this already, about an hour and a half behind the wheel. So uh, you have to take all of that with a bit of a grain of salt because I'm sure as you drive a vehicle more, you start to find some of its quirks and foibles and things maybe you don't like so much, but the sound system is good. The ride and handling is good. The seats are comfortable. Uh, so I, I don't I don't know what else to say. I, I think this is a, a solid entry and um, I'm really excited to get more time behind the wheel uh, eventually when uh, this hits the Chicago fleet. All right, so those are the on-road driving impressions, but this is a Jeep, so how does it do off-road? Let's take a look. All right, we are getting ready to go off-road in the Grand Cherokee L and uh, I really like this angle because it'll show some of the obstacles that we're going over and this is the forward facing camera that is special to some of these off-road vehicles that Jeep is putting out. So um, I'm turning the camera around and we're gonna go have a little fun so let's see how it goes. You good? I'm good. You can see I'm in four low and the suspension height is all the way up. So you have access to both the rear and the front cameras.
This is really cool with the lines that kind of give you a, a really good idea of where your tires are going to hit. So an excellent idea to avoid rocks or sharp, jagged bits that could pop your tires. Let's keep in mind, this is a three row vehicle we're driving here and the Wrangler in front of me is much smaller. course that there is no way this vehicle should have been able to do that. I hope you were able to catch some of the action on the front facing camera, but that was impressive. This is a three row vehicle. I think at one point I had like a 25 degree angle off, off, you know, camber and, you know, I splooshed through water and um, up hills, break over angles. And the technology that you have on here to help you get through these obstacles is really impressive. Of course, I did have spotters because they're still using these vehicles. They need to go on to the next set of journalists. But um, the fact that this vehicle can actually make it through the obstacles that I just went through, I'm super impressed. All right, so now I'm gonna just wrap this up because we've talked about the exterior, we've talked about the interior, we've gone through some of my on-road driving impressions and <laughs> we just had a really fun off-road experience. And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm speechless. I don't even know what to say here. Um, this is a great vehicle. This is an amazing vehicle. If you are looking for a three row Jeep and if you're looking for a three row vehicle, let's, let's, yeah, let's back that up. If you are just looking for a three row vehicle, I think from now on your, your search has to start here because on road, it's impressive off road. It's impressive. And, uh, you can even fit somebody who's six, four in the back seat. So, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you down the road.